thank the Lord for being here. Thanks for that good it's been to me. Through, through all the struggles up to now, how, how good it's been to me, Wayne. Sure. How, how, how when I got saved, it, it, looked like a, it looked like a daunting task. I remember when I first got saved, it was such a wonderful feeling. But, you know, as, as the head came down, I thought, Lord, can I really make it? <laughs> can I really make it? Can I, the life I live, the man I was, can I really make it? And he's assured me that I can really make it, Wayne. And if I can really make it, how anybody can really make it. I, I thank God for that. You know, I thought there was so much I wanted to try to learn, so much I wanted to try to do when I get saved, so much things I want to fix, and how it's been a process. How you put so much on me, I wasn't able to bear it. I thank God for that. He taught me about a good way, a good clean way, and the more the more he taught me, the more I wanted to do good for him. That's what it was all about. I wanted to do good for him. I said every day, God, you don't, you don't court taskmasters, you know. That's not what the Lord does. He wants shepherds over people. Not to drive them, but to leave them. I thank God that he's appointed a lot of good shepherds in my life. He didn't appoint taskmasters. That's what Pharaoh did. He appointed taskmasters. But I thank God that he appointed shepherds to lead you and teach you and guide you. And have his time and guide me myself. I thought the Lord had been so good to me, you know. But I can remember thinking back over when I got saved how wonderful it was. That everything was so brand new. And how I felt so good. I feel a little brand new today. I feel a little good today, too. I thank you for that. He's taught me so much. He's taught me the simple way, but it ain't been big. Big boasting speeches and things. It's just been these little things he's taught me over the years. A lot of times that's what we to just drive down the road. Just ask him. If you have a question, you ask the Lord. He will send you an answer. If you got an honest car before, and I thank you for that. He's been so good to me. He wants us children to make us. He wants us to come to him with our problems. He, he never told me to fix everything. And he told me just to come to him. Come as you are. Whosoever will come. And I thank the Lord for that. That whosoever will come, there's nothing I had to do. Because I wasn't going to be worth it anyway. Never be be worthy. I mean, even if there was a way, I could have done it. But God made a way that I could make it. A way of my escape. I'm so thankful for that. That I could leave that life of drugs I used to be in. And all the, all the torture and the things that came with it. And how I thought it was so impossible at the time. But it was so easy for God to do it when I truly got my heart set on Him. I'm so loud. I'll never forget the night I got saved. As long as I live. I, as long as I draw breath, I'll never forget how all that fell off of me. How I knew I was a new creature of Christ. I didn't know much about the Bible, but I knew the man that went down when the man that came up. And I still had problems, sure. There's still things I need to work on. Still this day, there's things I need to work on. But hell, I'm a little bit different than I used to be, Steve. Just because of the mercy and love of God. Because he's seen him. Seen a man with an honest heart. He wanted me to make it. I'm so thankful that he wanted me to make it. I could have done it myself. I never would have been able to. But how he sent his son to walk right by my side through this life. I'm so thankful he said he'd never leave me. He'd never forsake me. He'd go away with me all the way to the end. And I'm so thankful that. I think he goes with me to the end of the day. I mean, I don't even look out past the end of the day no more. I just Thank, thank you, God, for letting me get to my bed again, Steve. Let me thank you for this. still being saved, still being in the faith. I'm so thankful for that. It's such a joy to serve this man, though. It really is. That I fully got in my heart and learned. It's been such a joy to serve him. There was times I certainly made it hard on myself, but that was me. The Bible says the way of transgressors hard. His way, his, his bird is light. His yoke is easy. To take it upon us and learn of him. And the more you learn of him, the easier it gets, I believe, with all my heart. Now, that's tough times. Don't get me wrong. I'm not painting you. I'm painting you a pretty picture, not the truth. There's some tough times of sorrow in it. But he said, joy comes in the morning. I found joy it always comes in the morning. If I'll hang on, maybe not that morning, but one morning it's coming. I think please. She was singing, when I rise, I thought, Lord, one way or the other, I'm going to rise. If I don't rise in the morning on this earth, I'm going to rise again. I thank God I'm going to rise into life. I don't want to rise into death. I just thank God for being here. Don't want to get ahead of nobody and stuff, but I sure thank you, bud. Uh -huh. I mean, you know what kind of man I was. You remember all the prayers that went up for me, how mommy fasted and everybody in the church, they prayed all the time for me. The prayers was answered, and I thank God for that. Not just for me, but for my little boy. How he sees somebody different. He sees somebody that he can look up to, God gave him somebody you look up to. I wasn't a man you could look up to before. Wasn't much good in me. Never was. I always thought I was a pretty good, good old boy, but I really wasn't. But God seen something he could use. God seen something he can make new, and I thank you for that. He seen, seen a man that would be willing to, to thank him and keep thanking him. And I know I thank him all the time for drugs, but that's part of my that's part of my agreement with God, and I'm always going to do it. Wherever I'm at, I'm going to thank you as much as I can. Not to get in the way or anything, but to give you praise and glory. If the Spirit's moving, I won't say anything. But if God lays something on my heart, I'd like to stand up and say it. Sometimes I don't feel like it. You know, there's times I didn't feel like I don't feel the Spirit moving on me. There are times I just get up and say it anyway, I'm sure, because I know I'm going to be thankful anyway. It's not just how I feel anymore, Robert. It's what I know. I know what it says in the Bible. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it tomorrow. And there's times I 
I'm not going to feel like pain, but I want to get up and say, when I don't feel anything, thank you, God, because whether I feel it or not, He still did it. And I'm so thankful that He still did it. Whether I feel great that day or not, whether I feel like I've just been saved, or I feel so far from it, Sheila, it still doesn't matter. I'm still saved. I thank God for that. It's good to see you, brothers, in the back. I love everybody. I love everybody. Good to see everybody here. I really do. We love to see them. Everybody's welcome in the Lord's house. I know they've always made me feel welcome, and I'm so thankful for that. I thought I was on those drugs for so long, but God started to stir my heart a little bit. I didn't feel worthy of much, but God started to stir my heart a little bit, and He let me know I was good as anybody else. He just wanted to fix me. I thank God for that. Couldn't fix myself. Wouldn't even know how to. My thoughts are always messed up, but how God? God had a plan, and I'm so thankful for that plan. He was so good to me. The mercies He showed me. Right. I couldn't even explain how it happened. It all came yeah. together. If I had all the time in the world, yeah, I couldn't tell you how it all happened. Right. It took a lot of people. Right. It took a lot of people doing the will of God. That's how right. God don't come pray for me. People will give me Bibles. She would pray for anybody. There's so many things. It takes so many people that being obedient to God. To run everything, what you're doing don't matter. It matters to this old boy, and I know it matters to others. And God, God honors everything you do. He, he loves that you're, that you're obedient when you go speak to somebody, there's a seed being planted. And God can do what he I can't do nothing. I can just give God the glory and tell you what he did for me. But God can do all things. I'm so thankful this has been a wonderful life. After, after I got saved, I would have never knew how great life could be. I was so miserable. When I was young, I had, I had a lot of joy. I was one of happy kids and things. They got so many why I didn't even want to open my eyes. There was times I couldn't hardly get out of bed, didn't want to get out of bed. And when I did, I had to run to things and try to get help because I knew the Lord was going to meet me there and talk to me. And I didn't want to hear it at the time. I was ashamed of who I've become. But I thank God. I thank God. Once you get that love in your heart, yeah. you ain't ashamed no more. When you really take me young that you really knew, ain't ashamed no more. Right. Really no more. I love you for that. I thank you. He yeah, had to first come to him and he began to teach me. And he began to clean me up. But I, I love God. I don't want to get too in out of the way and talk too much. Just want to do what he moves on me to do. And I thank him for being here. Oh, I love him, Wayne. I really do. He's been so good to me. The more, the more I the more I think about what he's done for me, the more it amazes me. Hey, he's been so wonderful. And I want to tell everybody, uh, there's a boy who got saved at Costume today, and uh, he needs prayer. I believe his name is Tyler. You know, you know how it is when, the, when you first get saved, the head goes up, and then the devil comes along and wants to fight you. But he'll be needing prayer, and I thank God for that. I honor him for that. And uh, Jeanette, uh, Hope she came back there to her test come back and she don't have uh, cancer anymore. So praise God, he healed that. We all been praying for that. Who else but God can do these things? Jerry Collins used to see us over. He made the rocks and he made the trees. Yeah. I love that part when he said, uh, who else but God can do these things? I love that. Uh, who else but God can do things? can take a drug addict and turn him into a man that loves the Lord. I think that. I say I'm nothing because I ain't for God. He's been so good to me. I, I, that's where my heart's at. I want to serve the Lord and just do the best I can for him. I love everybody. I'm so happy to see everybody. just want to say that. I want to give him thanks again, though, for, for how he saved my soul. And he's made me a, some, maybe somebody did. It's the best way I can say it. Amen. I know I'm born again. I know what I know. I'd like to get closer and like to know more. But I know what I know for myself now. You know, I've seen as many miracles. I've seen as many blessings in my life. Sure, they've been hard times. But God's been so good to me. He brought me through everything. There was a time I couldn't tell my stomach told but maybe. I'll just be honest with you. But how God has taught me. God has taught me how he can take you through anything. I'm so thankful for that. I pray the Lord I'm get out of the way. Lord,
Brady came on by the other day. Yeah. No, all this guy's story or stuff with the tail on the run on my breath. I'm glad the Lord he gave me my own testimony. Sometimes it's right through a song. That song is my testimony, really, because that's yeah. right where I came from. Come that's on. Right. Yeah. And back a little bit more and things like I came with in the house of God. I, I was down in one old place, so, like you talk about. I was down beneath the little spot. I thank God that he... He had on, he it took me a little while up here on the back slide I still remember. Outside the coal mines up there in the field, down in the guard shack of praying. It took me quite a while, but when I prayed through, I know I got through to God. Yeah. I've made a wreck of my life, but I'm thankful to God that he came down here for me here in the truth. Yeah. Oh, he put the love down my heart for him for people. I didn't right. think I could forgive people. I didn't think I could ever love them. He put it down in there and took that hate out of me and made yeah. something new, something I could do myself. God can do it. He can do all things that the Lord is yeah. perfect with. And I'm thankful for His mercy, His love, and where He's brought me. Come on, brother. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I can say more rather right, since this last spray of water was it. Done since with my voice, but I still want to give God my all. Right. I owe Him my life. Amen. 
For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, that if one died for all, then were all dead. And that he died for all, that they which should live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Appreciate the Lord this evening. Thankful to be in His house this evening. Love to love to uh, be a help to somebody while we're up today. Uh, I thought maybe if we began to look the way that Brother Paul looked at things and uh, we began to talk about that home that is to come. He began to talk about that eternal home built for us in heaven. Uh, knowing that when we leave this mortal body and all this is behind us, those that belong to God, uh, this mortality will be swallowed up in immortality. Amen. That there will be no more dying, there will be no more sickness, there will be no more suffering, no sorrow, no heartache, no pain anywhere, no devil to have to battle with. We are home in heaven, an eternal place to live. <laughs> He said that we're confident knowing that while we're home in the body, while we're alive in this body, we're absent from the Lord, meaning we're not with Christ yet. He said that we walk by faith and not by sight. And he said we're confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body. Why? Because to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. He said, wherefore, this is there. That's why this is therefore. Wherefore, we labor, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. Amen. 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 If I could have anybody to accept me, Amen. I want it to be that man. Amen. I want it to be Jesus that would receive me. Amen. I want Him to accept my soul yeah. when I stand before Him. Praise the Lord. Sister Hickson used to give a testimony that every night she would testify and she would pray a part of her prayer in that she might be found acceptable in the sight of the Lord. She knew that this life down here was just a moment and the one to come was forever. Amen. And even though she knew the way and she lived the way, she still prayed that the Lord would be able to receive her when she stood before Him. Amen. Amen. If folks worry about this one having them, that one having them, let me tell you, you're not ever going to please everybody. Amen. You're never going to have everybody Amen. on your side. Right. But if you can have the King of Kings look down upon you and say, well done, the good and faithful servant, nothing else is going to matter to you from that day forward to be accepted by the Lord. He began to go a little further. He said, Wherefore we labor. We're working for something. We're working on something. We're going to receive something here in just a little while. And we're going to get according to what we have earned. Amen. 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 Paul said, wherefore we labor. We're working. Whether the president or absent, we may be accepted of him. 
He said, for we must all appear where? Before the judgment seat of Christ. Before the judgment seat of Christ. <laughs> and what are we going to do when we stand there? He said that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Amen. We're all going to get something from the Lord. Amen. And I've got to get something good with Amen. you. I'd like to get that Amen. eternal home Amen. that is waiting for the children of God. To meet folks Amen. nowadays, everybody you meet will tell you they're going to heaven. But I'm telling you, brother, if there's been no change in their life, they're not going to heaven. Sin won't go to heaven. Sinners won't make it to heaven. Amen. Amen. There's got to be a change in somebody. Amen. Right. Amen. You remember when the Lord saved you? Yep. Was there a change? Amen. Brother, something a while ago about a brand new heart and a brand new mind. You know why the Lord gave it to us? Because that old sinner's heart, sinner's mind did not have the ability to serve God. Right. He didn't have a desire to serve God. Right. God was the furthest thing from a sinner man's mind. Yeah, it was it was, when I was out in sin, I didn't think about God all day. Now when conviction began to get upon me, yeah. and His hand yeah. began to press upon me, then my thoughts began to turn to God. But brother, when I was out in sin, running up down the road, and my heart And a sinner's mind will lead him into sinful places. Amen. That's why when the Lord saved us, He changed us on the inside. No longer did I have the sinner's heart, the sinner's mind. But I had a brand new one. A brand new one. What kind of mind? The mind of Christ. The mind that the Lord had when He came. And you know what His mind was? Jesus' mind was to do the will of the Father. His heart was to please the Father. Child of God, that's what our heart and our mind will be like. Yeah, amen. Amen. I'm going to talk to you just a little bit this evening by the help of the good Lord. And, and you know, folks don't like to mention this part, but I'm going to mention it to everybody here tonight. Paul said, You, you like Paul? Yeah. Apostle Paul. He said, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Did you hear that? Something that is a terror is something that fear will get upon you. Fear, it'll make you afraid. It'll make your knees as the king in the old tent. Your knees will begin to smite one against another. Terror will take your sleep away from you. Amen. It'll put a fear down inside of you. And God has got a terror about Him. But not for the children of God. But for the sinner. There's a terror of standing before the Lord not right. right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. When you see right. me praying, and I don't know, I'm not talking about just you know, going to pray in front of folk, but when you see me praying, worshiping the Lord, working for the Lord, trying to do, I am laboring that I might receive that good reward. Now I know that salvation was bought by Jesus. Amen. It's a free gift. But a man or woman that received that free gift, it will change them on the inside. And they We walk in darkness. We never came into the light. Right. Or we stepped into it and turned back. And we got back to hell. Amen. You know why men love darkness rather than light? Because their works are evil. That's what it says. Amen. In darkness you feel like you can hide your works. Amen. I'm going to tell you tonight, there's a God that sees everything. Yeah, I've got no place to hide from no. Him. I've got no place to hide my wrong, my fault. I've got no place anywhere to hide away. And He can't see Amen. what I do. We'll talk to you this evening. I thought I'd sit at the house. This is all going to begin to deal with me. And I thought, boy, you know how I'm just human. Forgive me, but I ought to read that tonight to our people. Well, here I am. I'm going to read it to you. Right. Be obedient. Praise Amen. the Lord. You're my home. Yeah. Right. My Lord. You're... Amen. Hi. Yeah, my Lord. I mean... Hallelujah. <laughs> you know what I believe it'll be like? If we get inside, it'll be like we just get inside of the door closes right behind us. That's how close yeah, that it's going to be for me and right. Amen. Amen. I don't think anybody's just going to say, shake in. We're going to make it in there by the grace of God. Yeah. Amen. 
And a man or woman that's not trying is not going to make it. You can't make it if you don't try, children. Right, right. You can't make it. Now, that does not matter how many hands you shook, nope. how many times you've been put the back up. Right. That don't save you. Right. What right. saves a man or woman is the Spirit of the Lord to get a deal with their heart. Right. And conviction gets upon them, and they break down and they cry. Right. Why do they cry? They don't cry because they're in trouble. They don't cry because they got caught. They cry because they're sorry for the other sinful life. Right. They're sorry that they know that the King of Lord had to come down and suffer and be punished for the thing that you and I have done. They cry, they mourn, they call the sorrow of God gets upon them. Tears begin to flow and they begin to repent. He said to give unto us the gospel of reconciliation, to be reconciled unto God. You be reconciled unto God means you go and fix things right. with the Lord. Go and fix things with Him. That folks are sinning in the houses of the Lord around this nation today. They live in sinners' minds. And they go out and they live like the devil. And then they come back into church. And they think the call they do that. They're all right. But I'm telling you tonight that they know they need to be reconciled. They give back to God. Give back to the living God. Give back to Satan. Praise the Lord. He said to be reconciled unto God. He went on, he said, We do not commit ourselves to the end of you. Give the case of glory on our behalf. She may have somewhat to answer them with glory in appearance. And not in heart. Salvation begins in the heart. When Jesus dealt with you, he did not knock on your mind. He knocked on your heart. Because that is where salvation takes root. The Lord has got to be in that heart. If the Lord is not in that heart, I've seen them time after time begin to get in, they begin to want to run, they begin to want to do, but they never got the Lord in there. And they get up, they try to dress it, they try to walk it. Some of them try to get into things, but they never got the Lord in there. And they might go a month. They might go a month, two months. But after a while, because the Lord is not in that heart, somebody else is in that heart. It's either God that's in there or that old devil is in there. And if the devil's in there, he may lay low for a while. But somewhere, he will rise up. And they begin to turn because they have no root in them. They will die. There is a soul saving salvation. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus knocks and we open up yeah. and He comes in. <laughs> he and His Father, they come and they, they eat with us. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But you remember the night that the Lord gave you a brand new mind? Yeah, Can you remember? Come on, if you've been so long. Did you moment. forget that old heart you used to have? Do you remember what it was like when the love of God came in? Because, brother or sister, that's the first thing you felt was the love of God. We all that are born of God are born of love. And a man of woman never found that. Never got saved. Amen. That love began to ignite in your heart. Yeah. Mm. When you got up, you remember that brand new mind? Yeah. You understand and they begin to get you? Yeah. Praise God. The way that you begin to look at things that you never looked at them that way before. Right. Hey. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. When you might have been just content. And so happy just to sit in this sunshine. Yeah. And just look around at his beautiful trees. Yeah. And his birds singing yeah. to him yeah. up all the branches. Yeah. That before you never paid no mind yeah. to it. But then when God gives you life, you appreciate that life. Yeah. You remember that you were one time dead and did not even know it. Yeah. You were on your way to hell every day. The merciful hand of God is what kept you out of that horrible pit. But when he opened your eyes, you appreciated the gift of life. God gave you. you appreciated the opportunity of another day upon God's earth. You began to have that brand new mind and that brand new heart. The lion left. Yeah, yeah amen. Right. The dirty words left. Amen. The lust left. Amen. Mm. 
Amen. Poverty. They say, you speak the words of plenty. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. No, right. If he speaks the word, we claim it. Right. Amen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Where won't we? Yeah. Them folks said just glory and appearance. Yeah. But they don't have it in their heart. Right. If you don't have it in your heart, you don't have anything. That's right. You hear me? If Jesus is not in your heart, you're lost. Right, amen. If the Lord doesn't live in my heart, I'm lost. Man. Right, amen. It doesn't matter if they put a, a, my name on the plaque and hang it on the front door. Right. If the Lord's not in my heart, I live in this world, I'm going to hell. Amen. And I don't want to go to hell. He moved in a long time ago. I want him to stay. Yeah. For him to stay, I have to give him a place he's willing to dwell in. Amen. You willing to live in this thing? The Lord will say any creature. <coughs> talking about man. Yeah. Talking about man. He'll say anything. Yeah. And anyone that he saves, he cleanses. Amen. He makes them clean from the inside <coughs> to the outside. Amen. Come on, I'm going to preach it right on the line. Yeah, see, come on. There's some that are hung on what's on the outside yeah. and ain't concerned about what's on the inside. Right. Amen. And there's others that say it's on the inside. But there's all kinds of sin hanging on the outside. Right, amen. Yeah. It's working both ways. Amen. Yeah. You'll be clean inside and outside. Amen. 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 That bladder, that bowl, that dish should be clean on the inside right. and on the outside. Amen. Nobody does a clean up job by like Jesus. Amen. 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 He saved me. He cleansed me from the heart to the outside. Amen. 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 Yeah. And that's how it works. He said, whether we be beside ourselves, it's to God. Whether we be sober, it's for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. <coughs> they which live should not live and walk according to their own desires of their own heart and their own ways and their own minds. They shouldn't live unto themselves, but they should live unto him which died for them. Who's that? Shouldn't live unto themselves, but should live unto Jesus. The one that died for me knows again. We don't want to live according to our own fancy. Amen. Do those things that will please the Lord. Even if it doesn't please friends or family. Amen. Amen. He said, Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, and though we have known Christ after the flesh. Yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, any man, anybody, he is a new creature. The Lord begins to make a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things. Or become you. Amen. You know what happened? When the hand of God got upon you, conviction got upon you. You begin to weep. And that's how old time conviction works. It'll yeah. make you cry. Yeah, you You'll cry out yeah. somebody yeah. beat you. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Your heart is broken. Yeah. And it's broken on the sin. Yeah. Tears begin to run. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. And the Lord begins to break down. And when you kneel, and if it was at the altar, if it was at the pew, if it was at the house, or driving the car, or on the side of the road, in a ditch line somewhere, when the Lord saved you, that old man died that moment. Amen. Read it. The altar in the Word of God, the altar was a place of death for yeah, sacrifice. Yeah. Whatever was laid on that altar was slain. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You lay your sins on that altar, that sinful man died. Yes, right. That's why we go out afterwards and we bury him in the river. Right, amen. Yeah. And amen. raise up a new creature, walk in the news of life. Right. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Praise if you're walking the same old way, yeah, no that baptism didn't do you a bit of good. Amen. Boy, I'm not afraid to take some life baptizing now, but let me tell you something. I kind of get tired when they want to go back and go back and go back and go back. Sometimes you want to take them aside and say, listen, you get in this, you get rooted and grounded, we'll go baptize you. Come on, man. But a wet center is no better than a dry center. You've got to be saved before you get in that water. That's just a symbol. That's just an open confession to the world. That is open before everyone that the old man is dead and I live for Jesus Christ. I'm a new man. Don't look for me down at the bars anymore. Don't look for me down in the well. Amen. You may be in Christ, you new creature, old things have passed away, behold, all things become new, and all things are of God. Those new things that he's talking about are the things of God that begins to work in a person's life. Who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given us the ministry of reconciliation. God, hallelujah, yes, praise the Lord, wants us to be reconciled yeah. to Him. Yes, he does. Yeah. To fix that broken relationship with God. Now, God no. did not break it. No, amen. No. Amen. Try. God never broke His Word. No, He did. He never betrayed. No. He never forsook. No, amen. If any of that went on, it was mere you. Right, amen. Amen. Praise God. Hey, backslider, get back with God. Yeah, amen. Be reconciled unto God. Amen. That one that you made a promise to to serve. Right, that one that you gave your oath and your word to to serve. Right, you better keep that word. Yeah. You amen. better keep that oath. Yeah. Jesus is coming. We're going to stand before Him one right. day. Nobody's gonna get us out of it. That's right. Amen. Nobody will be hallelujah. Glory to God, children. If I miss it, if I miss it on that day, there won't be any amount of time that I could ever do that will restore me unto God. Right, amen. To wit, which means to know that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing the trespasses. Unto them and have committed unto us, the apostles, the word of the reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's place, in Christ's stead, in the place of Christ, we beg you, be reconciled to God. For he hath made him, talk about Jesus. He had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus never knew sin. But he took our sin upon him. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That we might. Did you hear that? That we might. You know what would cause us to not? If we refuse to be reconciled. Amen. Right. Glory to God. Look up, smile, Kevin. I'm just about done. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. But not yet. Come on, brother. Do you have that new born again experience? Oh, yeah. I'm not talking about that ball game high. No. The team wins one and everybody out there is looking on the horse the next morning. And every one of them still on the way to hell. Right. That's true. Mm, preacher, it's a truth in the house. I'm talking about that. That changes on the inside. It works to the outside. Yeah, amen. A grown man will cry. Yeah, amen. You say men don't cry. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Holy Bible said Jesus wept. Right. And then a man in this place, right. man enough like Jesus. Yeah, amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Reconciling to God, 
Because the only one you fool is yourself. Right, amen. The only one I'm fooling myself. Yeah, I can't fool God. No. I can't keep the church door open no. and force my way into glory land. No. I've got to go through the door. Amen. And the door is Jesus. Amen. And you can't keep Jesus open. No. I tell you what he can do. He can lay you down. Amen. Amen. See, now let's be reconciled. This picture is because the most important thing you can do, Amen. the most important thing, is to be accepted of Him when you stand before Him. Yes, Amen. It won't matter if they build a statue of in a town square. Right. If you leave without Jesus, yeah. you're in trouble. Yeah, that's right. No hope. Yeah. No help. Yeah. Praise the right. Does he still say folk children? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, preacher. You don't know. What does God not know? Right, he knows it all. I'm not God, but I know who's moving on me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Who I, believe? I know who's moving on me. Yeah. There, there's not anything out there crawling up and down the neighborhood. That's got more power than the Holy Ghost. Amen. There are men and women sitting here tonight that God has absolutely delivered them from death itself. Yes, Bound Amen. in bondage Amen. under bitter sin. Amen. Out of their mind and out of control. Amen. And time is about short, it was all over. But they're sitting in the house of the Father tonight because they have a born again experience because the Lord knows and they open the door and He came in and changed our life forever. Amen. You can say your life will change forever. Yes. Change. There's no salvation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. You can say those words tonight with no condemnation. That's the greatest testimony you've ever heard. In those words is life. Eternal. That the curse of death will be broken. Yeah. And we have hope. Amen. But if you can't look and say, thank you, Lord, for saving me without having something wrong that you've done come up before you. Right. Amen. Or some shame get up on you. Right. Amen. Then you need to be reconciled to God. Right. Amen. I'm nobody. Yeah, I'm not. Nobody here has to tell me that I'm nobody. I know that I'm nobody without the Lord. Amen. I know that I'm nothing great without the Lord. Amen. But that is in my soul right now. Praise the Lord has never missed it. He's never missed it. And I'm telling you children, while we have the opportunity, it's time to be reconciled to God. Get it all fixed up and be ready to go. Amen. Because Jesus is coming. Yeah, he is. Ron, in a little bit, we're going to get out of all Amen. Never again. We have to worry about this word. But dear folks, this evening, praise the Lord. They told me now, <clears throat> just bear with me. And I'm not saying to the other. They said when the little sinner was dying the other day, she almost denied that thing. As corrupt and as crooked as the person could be. Ricky, y'all don't say that. You know all about the crooked people. They're there uplifting the abomination. They're uplifting everything that is corrupt and crooked. And they're a sinner and they're not a saint. And they left in that condition. And let me tell you what I told them. I said, she just started crying out of hell. The mansion stay here. The limo stay here. The furs and the diamonds stay here. But the soul went to its long home. Amen. And if she could talk to you out of that place tonight, she'd tell you there's not a thing in this world worth your soul. There's not a thing in this life. That's worth your soul. That's right, brother. Your soul, how important is it? It's so important that the Son of God came and gave His life. Right. Amen. Men and women should not 
go to that horrible place. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All is open. Stand the rest yourself. Don't give place to any enemy. Give us a song if you got one. It's time to pray. <clears throat>
doing any time. Thank the Lord for saving me and bringing me out of that hell I was in. And I, I like to hear that good word of God, that good preaching. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thank the Lord for saving me. I'm going to be here today. Thank you for being here today. Anybody else? Brother Ron, I thank the Lord for saving me. I thank the Lord for saving me. Uh, thank Him for my family. Thank Him for all the people. All the people who's let me meet along the way. I really got it. I've had a, just a praise in my heart here lately. He's opened my eyes a whole lot of to some things. And I thank Him for that. I thank Him for His mercy. How He's taught me. How He kept, he kept, me, kept me around when I, you know, maybe a lot wouldn't. <laughs> how He kept me and He brought me through things. Uh, I thought only God would do that for somebody, and I'm so thankful He did that. He knew I, He knew I'd been through a lot of things in life, uh, Brother Wayne, but uh, He was going to teach me some things, and I'm thankful how patient. What a great teacher the Lord is. You know, the Lord can move on you in so many ways, but He's such a wonderful teacher too. And how he, He's so patient with you, and He'll take time. But after a while, though, once you learn it, He expects you to He expects you to move up to it. But I, I thank God. I I'd just like to humbly say as much as I possibly could how I'm so thankful for my life. For my new life yeah, that he's gave me. All the people he's put in and what a wonderful blessing it's been. The life I had was so miserable before, but it's not anymore. It's not perfect by any means, but it's so much wonderful. It's so much better with the Lord. Every day is so much better with the Lord. I thank him for my little boy. He's he's such a joy to me. I always want to thank him for that. I, I never knew I could love anything on this earth like I love that little man. And I, I just thank God for that. Wasn't always the best dad, Wayne. Uh, even when I first got saved, there's some things that had to come out, but I thought how I loved him and the Lord has taught me how to be a little more patient. He'll teach me over time. He'll show me how patient he was me. How, how many things he had to teach me. How many times I fell apart, Robert. He's, put, he's had to come along and put me back together so many times. Amen. But I thank him for that. He, he teaches me a lot of times. I, I think, well, I wonder why he ain't getting this or getting that. And he'll, he'll remind me, why wasn't I getting this or getting that? So I, I'm so thankful that God, he, he'll do it in a way, though, that he'll be like, oh, I understand that, Lord. But I'm so thankful for that. just want to say... <laughs> As honestly as I can, how much I love him and how much I thank him. He's been real good to me. I thank him for getting to be here. It, it's been a precious day to me. It's been a precious moment in time. As Jess talked about those moments in time, it seems like it, it's been just a wonderful moment in time. Maybe one of the big shouting things, but I just, I love the Lord. I love him when it's a shout and I love the peace of God. I thank him for that. I really do. I thank him for that, that peace and I always have it. Seems like I always wore it in my mind so much, but it's getting a little slower, and that's God. There's nothing I can do to teach myself to do that. I heard them say you can train your mind, and you might be able to remember things, train your mind, but it takes God. It's not a self help program. It takes God to take these things out of me, and I'm thankful for God. I'm thankful for that. You know, it's through prayer and meditation and seeking Him. I mean, I have to seek Him to get there, but I thank God for that. I thank Him. I want to thank Him, and I want to say this honestly too, and I believe with all my heart. I don't know when it'll be, but I want to thank Him for that precious Holy Ghost. I believe He's going to send it my way. I I know you can't just claim it or nothing, but I can feel it's getting closer. I just want to thank you for that because I know I can feel it getting closer. And when I've done what I need to do and I'm pleasing to Him and it's His time, then I'll have that. And I thank God for that. But I want to thank Him in advance because I believe. I really do. I believe I understand the reason I need it. I believe I understand why I need it and why I want it. And I was telling Him that today. I just had a little talk with God. I don't tell everything I tell the Lord, but I understand a little more, you know, why the reasons and what we need things for. But I just thank Him for teaching me that. And I want to praise Him for the good things is coming, and I'm going to praise Him for the things you'll see me through the bad things are coming. I thank God for everything.
Please keep my memory of your prayers too, and I thank you for your prayers. Every one of you, I sincerely thank you for your prayers. Anybody else? I thank God for being saved. And God kept me when I couldn't keep myself. So I thank Him for that. And I, you know, I really want to thank God for something that happened to me probably 30 years ago or 31 or something. My son, he got married about two or three weeks ago in Cincinnati, and we went to the wedding. And this guy that had done something to me 30, 31 years ago, uh, I still had that in my heart. I had a grudge against him. And uh, there were probably three or four hundred people at that wedding. But uh, he come over to me and he said, uh, Bud, said, you got a beautiful family. I said, well, I appreciate it, you know, and I really, I, I really didn't want to talk to him because uh, he, he about destroyed my life at one time. He did destroy my family. And uh, I felt a peace come over me. And when he told me that, he said, Bun, you got a beautiful family. I said, well, Chuck, Chuck, I said, you got a beautiful family too. And it's just like the Spirit of the Lord just raised my arm up and I put my arm around him. I said, I love you. I said, I love you, Chuck. And he, he put his arm around me and he said, I love you too. But you know, it's been 30 some years ago and I've always carried that, you know. I, and uh, I praise God that, that that grudge has left me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I praise him for that. You know, that was something big, you know. That's, that's 30 years ago I carried that, you know. And uh, sometimes it bothered me too, you know, going to church. You can't hold grudges, you know. You take a grudge with you to the grave, you're going to miss it, not like you preach, you know. You've got, to, you've got to be right with God, you know, in every aspect, you know. And, but I thank God for that. And, it, you know, and I thought about, I thought my son didn't know nothing about it. He's the one that got married that day. And uh, he went to Italy for his wedding. And uh, he was at the house yesterday. And uh, I said, Robbie, I said, uh, the Lord, the Lord moved for me in your wedding. And uh, he said, what are you talking about? So I told him what the Lord had done for him, and he broke down and started crying. He's the one that, he travels the world doing mission work. But, you know, it just all worked out so good. You could just feel the peace of the Lord, you know. And right now, I could sit right down with him and eat with the guy, or I would do anything for him. But, uh, Thirty years ago, I couldn't. And I carried that all my life, and I'm glad that God moved in that for me. It was, uh, it was God sent, and it was sent at the right time. You know, it was just, uh, just like I, my arm was up and hugging him, you know. But, but, you know, I didn't even know it, more or less. And I said, well, I love you, Chuck. He said, well, I love you too, bud. So uh, I'm glad God moved in that for me. I wasn't going to go to my grave or something like that against me. I thank the Lord for being here. I thank Him for that good preaching. I told David, I said, I believe if you live with that one chapter he just preached, you'd yeah. make it to hell. <laughs> yeah. You want to preach the rest of the Bible. <laughs> but Jesse preaches really good. I get I get a lot of help out of his preaching. Yeah. And all the good singing, the singing was good too. I thank God for being here. Anybody else? No, I'm just going to get a bit of a turn. I'm going to look it up.